Hello my friends, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. It has been so long since I filmed. I just, I think it's almost been a month probably. Like all the shit that I've edited and like put up on my channel recently is stuff that like I recorded like a month ago. No, more than that because it's been a month since I recorded like a month and a half ago and just like haven't gotten to and then that kind of worked out for me because it's been my life has just been like a little bit hectic and I haven't had time to film so here I am at the very end of the month kind of but it's like this is the only time before the end end of the month that I'm gonna have time to do like a wrap up and shit so um there are still few, still a few days left in the month and uh I'm gonna be talking about the books that I've finished so far and I think probably the one I'm reading now I will end up finishing but I'll just include that in next month's wrap up because I don't know, like, it's just, it's just too much. <laughs> it's just too much. This is the only day this week I could do this, so. <sighs> okay, so first I'd like to talk about a book that I don't physically have with me. I listened to this on audio on Scribd that is Gothic by Philip for Cassie. This came out this year, this is a 2023 release. I believe it came out in February. And this book was really good. Um, this was so strange. It had a lot of like vintage horror vibes, which I like. Uh, this is about an author. I think his name is Tyson, if I'm remembering right. And he's kind of older. I think it's like his like 59th birthday, if I'm remembering correctly. So like he's an older guy, which I don't read a lot of books with protagonists that are that old and it was kind of interesting. It's a little bit different. Not like a ton different, but like a little bit different. Uh, someone who's like super established in their life, you know what I mean? So he gets this gift from his partner, uh, this huge antique, like this beautiful ornately carved desk because he's having some issues with his writing career and stuff like that. So she's thinking that like maybe this will be like a thing to spice it up and like get the juices flowing. But it turns out to be like a cursed object and all these terrible things start happening. And I think what I liked most about this is like it's a little bit schlocky, like it's a fucking haunted desk, so silly. But it gets really gruesome and creepy and the way that this book unfolds is just really unexpected. Like I thought it would end in a spot and like it didn't, it like kept going after that. And you're like, what could have possibly like gone on after this? And it was really good. And I'm really looking forward to picking up more of this guy's work because yeah, it's, it's just unexpectedly good. Next, I wanna talk about The Dogs by Robert Calder. This came out in 1976 and uh, this one, <laughs> I don't know. Um, It wasn't super good and like I, you know, kind of expected that. I kind of expected that, but okay, so this is about this facility who's breeding puppies for specific things and at one point they notice one of the puppies is missing. They're like, eh, weird. Uh, and then this man, a professor, happens to find this puppy. And he, of course, doesn't know about this genetic testing, how they're trying to make dogs like smarter and more alert and more reactive and vicious, right? Um, so he takes in this puppy and is just like a regular old German Shepherd until it's not, like something happens. Um, <clears throat> And the dog ends up wandering off into the woods and it creates, it like picks up these little straggler dogs and eventually there's like this small pack and this small pack starts hurting people, right? And uh, so like there's parts where you're following this dog, its name is Orf, which is just like a noise. I don't know why you would name a dog that? I know it's short for orphan, right? But like, why would you name a dog orphan and why would you shorten it to orf? It's just so weird. It sounds like you got punched in the stomach. But uh, so orf is like, uh, wait, what was I even saying? This, the name, like just constantly, I was like, Ugh. like every time it came up, I was like, Ugh. Uh, but orf like makes this pact, pack, not a pact. <laughs> orf makes a pact, maybe with the dog devil. But Orf is leading this pack and I can't fuck. What was I saying? 
uh, I don't know. Anyways, so we're following like Orph and his pack at some points and like some, then we're also following like the professor guy. And for a long time, their stories like have nothing to do with each other. And I think that's the part that really got me is like, I don't give a shit about this like really, he's just, you could plop him into a dozen different like vintage horror stories about like a middle-aged dude, right? Um, you know, books written in the 60s and 70s and sometimes even the 90s, like you could just plop them in there. They're, they're interchangeable. They're the same fucking character. And so like sometimes that is not entertaining to me. It's just some fucking guy. And especially when it's like, I don't care what he's doing for 200 pages. You know, I, I don't care about who he's trying to strike up a relationship with and you know him trying to fix things with his estranged wife like i don't care about that um so really the only thing i found even slightly interesting was what orf was doing uh with his pack which was weird and uh the author wrote about this in a way that's like it's almost like he's trying to be a nature show almost um just very emotionless but like sometimes that comes off really weird because he's talking about like these dogs like banging and stuff which is <laughs> just it's just creepy and the girl dogs are all called like the gray bitch you know and stuff like that over and over and and i mean like i don't have a problem with that word but it's just so redundant like can't you find something else to say uh also there is some really uh, hard violence um, against like the dogs attacking people, the people attacking dogs. Um, there's this dog fight scene um, and they're talking about like training the dogs and using other animals of course to train the dogs to fight. Most of that was like there was context enough in the writing for me to know oh i'm not gonna like this and like i was able to skip over it for the most part but there's definitely that um quite a few instances of that so i don't know like all in all kind of ridiculous a little bit um kind of boring a little bit not very good a little bit <laughs> i also picked up this month pinata by leopoldo gout this came out just last month this is a 2023 release and i think i definitely am in the minority where like i thought this was okay but uh it really didn't knock my socks off unfortunately this is the story of a single mother carmen she at the beginning of the story is in mexico she is overseeing the renovation of this old abbey and she's there with her two daughters who are teenagers. Something goes wrong with the project. They end up finding these like relics inside one of the walls and there is kind of an accident and Carmen gets taken off the job. So they travel back from Mexico to um, their hometown, wherever they are, I think in New York. And while there, her youngest daughter starts acting really strangely, like from the time that they get back from their uh, trip in Mexico. And it's a very unlike her. And these things start to happen. And it seems like they are definitely connected to her. Uh, so it is a possession story. And it deals a lot with the folklore of the native people of Mexico. I think that's a part I liked the most was, um, you know, talking about the tradition and the culture and the history of um, the, I think they were called the Nahua people in Mexico. That was so interesting to me. Um, I did listen to part of this on audio, which really helped because there is a lot of um, pronunciations that like, I just would have had no idea. <clears throat> no idea at all. So that was really helpful. I believe this is also on Scribd. Um, so that was really nice for me when I was reading the print and it's like, okay, I know this name is this because sometimes my brain gets caught up on it and then it makes it hard for me to read the book because, and like, that's not about the author and it's not about the culture. It's about me. It's about me and my dumb brain. But um, it was so helpful to have that kind of as a reference. I don't know. It's like I read this book and I was just like, huh, you know? Uh, I don't really know what to say about it. Like there isn't anything specific 
about it that it's like oh i know i didn't like this like in the dogs i know i don't like it because like there's dogs fucking and and like the guy's really boring it's not that so i don't know what it is i i think part of it actually is that you're really split between this family and also um this woman who is nawa who met the family while they were in mexico and like she is the one who's like oh something must be going on here and i think that it was like when something really juicy started to happen with the family, it'd be like, oh, we're back with Yoltsi in Mexico. And it's like, okay, but I really like want to get to the juicy stuff. Like that's what's interesting. So I don't know. Um, lots of people really loved this. So I think this is definitely a me problem. But the cut, I mean, this is a gorgeous book. This like rusty, goldish, bronzish. And there is like these scenes with like these creepy butterflies, which is really cool. Also, this is a book I picked up, The Toll, by Neil Schusterman. This came out in 2019 and this was the conclusion to a series that I had up to this point really, really liked, but I read 250 pages of this, which is a whole fucking book length and nothing was going on and i was like i just don't like this right now i don't like this anymore what's i just can't it's really hard for me to quantify like the like breakneck pace of the second book and then you get to this and it's like hitting a brick wall and it's like it it left the second one left on such an an explosive ending like i can't believe that he couldn't like pick up the inertia of that and bring it into the third book and I think this really suffered kind of like Pinata for me, where we're following people I just don't care about. I just don't care about them. Unfortunately, I fucking didn't like this book and I didn't even, I didn't finish it. But I read so much of it, you guys. Uh, this is a 620 something page book. I read 250 pages of it. I suffered through enough <laughs> to know I didn't like this, unfortunately. Um, but the story itself is about this utopian society. It's run by like two facets of the government. One is like a supercomputer. And this supercomputer has just like this vast database of knowledge. Everyone's like hooked into it. It's like in your head, right? Um, also, people don't suffer from things like aging, um, injuries, disease, anything like that. Um, you will, for the most part, if if their little helicopter drones can get to you, like, you won't die. So the supercomputer has come up with this other part of the government that it's separate from, of the Asides, who will kill people to make sure that the population um, is stable. Uh, so, yeah, it was really good until this book. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. But, like, I don't even... I'm, I'm just bummed out, but I'm not even like curious like oh i wonder what did happen i don't care i don't care about it so i think that's you know the sign for me that it's okay for me to put it down it was the right decision and it's a bummer but whatever like what can i do i also ended up picking up off season by jack ketchum this month this one came out in 1980 so this is an older book and i didn't know this until i got to the end but i believe this is jack ketchum's first book which I, di I didn't know and didn't expect, but I think this ki it kind of explains uh, my feelings on it, perhaps, because I did not really like this that much. Uh, it took a really long time to get going. This is a story about a family of cannibals who live in the hills in New England somewhere. I can't remember exactly what state, but uh, they've somehow like had multiple generations and even though they're outside of a really small town it's like nobody knows they exist even though they are capturing and eating humans so it's uh that's a little hard for me to quantify but um this starts out with um let's see does it even say what her name is i can't remember um, this woman who is like vacationing in a little cabin there and things end up going terribly wrong for her when she meets up with um, these cannibals and it takes a long time to get anywhere and then I found 
that it was shocking and gross not in a bad way it's like i like that right shocking and gross but i don't know it just seems so run-of-the-mill now uh for me i guess and so that was a little bit of a bummer like it wasn't terrible but it's just like it didn't bring anything new to the table and then reading that you know this is ketchum's first book i'm like oh okay maybe that's maybe that's it you know it's his first book obviously he developed as a writer after that <laughs> very obviously but I, I can't say i wasn't like a little bit disappointed that i didn't love it more um i felt like the ending was a little eh, and the whole book was just a little eh. but on to the final one i finished this is just like home by sarah gailey this came out last year so 2022 and oh my god this book was crazy man Sarah Gailey just writes with a lot of heart and boy this is about um a woman named Vera who is estranged from her family her mother her and her mother like do not have a relationship she doesn't even call her mother like mom she refers her mom makes it known she would like to be referred to by her name and definitely not called mom so it is really surprising to vera when her mother asks her to come home and um kind of prepare the house because she's very ill and you know she's on her deathbed basically and this story goes a lot of ways a lot of ways i didn't expect in such a great way but basically uh vera's father was a serial killer and the house that he built, the house that her mother lives in, the house that she's calls back to take care of, was lovingly built by her father and it is in that basement where he murdered a number of people. So it's really complicated, especially because you can tell Vera really loves her father and she yearns for a relationship with her mother and it's just, there is a lot of heart in here and the ending is like something I did not fucking expect. It was so wild and so heartfelt and like horrific and strange and good. And I would really recommend this um, if you haven't picked it up. It was super excellent. Like a great haunted house story, a great story where there are dual timelines, which I love. One where we're kind of exploring what happened with Vera's childhood and her father and one obviously where Vera is an adult dealing with um, her sick mother in the house and boy it is a fucking great story and then just really quick um i'm in the middle of cold moon over Babylon by michael mcdowell and i just want to say i really am enjoying it so far i have like 100 pages left i think and this is fucking weird so i can't wait to tell you about this um in my next wrap up video but i really like this so far and i think this is probably one that i would also recommend but I might be speaking too soon, but I don't think I am. It's so strange. I love it. All right, so those are the books I ended up picking up in April. I will catch you soon with um, my TBR for May and I don't know all that. I'd love to know if you read any of these and what you thought about them, what you ended up getting to this month, if there was anything great, anything you'd recommend. That's all I have for you today though. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.